Welcome back to Brain Spec Made Ridiculously Simple. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the common patterns, what may be causing them, and then what to do about it. So the first thing I learned from SPECT is drugs and alcohol are bad for your brain. They give this pattern we call scalloping or overall decreased perfusion. But then I learned there are people who weren't doing drugs and there weren't alcoholics that had this pattern. And so over the years, I've realized, yes, drugs and alcohol can give us this pattern, but also chemotherapy in some patients. Environmental toxins like mold, um, carbon monoxide poisoning. So we see this pattern a lot in our firefighters. Anoxia, any lack of oxygen. So for example, you had a near drowning episode or you had a heart attack where you stopped breathing for five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, it can damage your brain. Infections, hypothyroidism, severe anemia. Um, SPECT is a blood flow study, so anything that lowers uh, red blood cells can, in effect, damage your brain. So when we see this pattern, um, we always go, why? And so, for example, um, this is a couple who failed marital therapy. Uh, and it turned out the husband was working in a factory that finished furniture. And he was around toxic substances all day long. He didn't drink, he didn't do drugs, but he was being poisoned by go to work. And it was easy to just say he was a jerk and you should divorce him. The harder question is to ask why. And that's what the imaging does for us. So when we see this pattern, the first thing is find and stop the toxin, treat infections, and then work on rehabilitating the brain. What does that mean? Put the brain in a healing environment, which is basically care about it, then avoid things that hurt it, do things that help it. Other treatments we like, like neurofeedback, hyperbaric oxygen, and supplements, multiple vitamin, fish oil, brain boost can make a significant difference. Another pattern we see is overall increased perfusion. We often see this in bipolar disorder when people are in manic episodes. We see it during inflammatory processes like lupus uh, or other autoimmune disorders. We see this in one of the subtypes of ADHD called, we call the ring of fire. So when you see this pattern, you want to work up and treat potential inflammation such as lupus or even food allergy sometimes can cause this, um, eliminate the cause, and then calming interventions such as GABA uh, or magnesium, sometimes we might even use an anticonvulsant. Traumatic brain injury, as I talked before, we actually see a number of different patterns. Sometimes we'll see a focal deficit, so one side or the other, often we'll see asymmetries, We'll see the prefrontal cortex is flat. Why? Because it hits the front part of the skull over and over again and ends up flat. That's what we saw in our NFL players. Um, you'll see decreases in the temporal poles because they butt up against a sharp bony ridge. Um, we'll see contra coup injuries, maybe damage in the front and on the opposite side in the back. Um, and this very interesting term called crossed cerebellar diastasis, and I know I just made your brain short circuit, but it's super simple. If you hurt the front part of the brain, it'll turn off the opposite side of the cerebellum. So crossed cerebellar diastasis just means low blood flow. And as I mentioned, we see traumatic brain injury in 40% of our patients. So we're always trying to rehabilitate their brains. Again, avoid bad, do good, nerve feedback, hyperbaric oxygen, we're huge fans of that, medications or supplements that are really targeted to overall brain health and then whatever system has been hurt. There's another pattern called hyperfrontality. <gasps> what does that mean? It means your frontal lobes are working too hard. So hyperfrontality, and it's classically seen in the research literature with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, or 
obsessive compulsive spectrum. OCD spectrum disorders, so oppositional defiant disorder, autism, trichotillomania. Um, we also see it in people who get stuck, who are worried, rigid, and flexible. Um, if things don't go their way, they get upset. And in over-focused kinds of depression and anxiety where they just can't th stop thinking about the bad thoughts. When we see the front part of the brain work too hard, we want to raise serotonin. And we do that with exercise, with certain kinds of diets I talk about in my writings, supplements such as 5-HTP and saffron. I'm a huge fan of saffron. If it's more serious, we might use an SSRI. If there is a psychotic process, we'll also consider Risperdal or Zyprexa that helps to calm things down. So you have hyperfrontality and hypofrontality, so you know what that means. It's low activity in the frontal lobes, classically seen with ADHD, but also schizophrenia, traumatic brain injury, certain medications. If you have low frontal lobe activity, it predicts relapse in alcoholics. There's a lack of conscientiousness and a lack of forward thinking. We also see it in some forms of depression. So if it's low, we want to stimulate it. You can do that with exercise. Um, stimulating supplements such as green tea, L-tyrosine, rhodiola. Um, we might use a stimulant like Ritalin or Adderall if they have ADHD. If there's a psychotic process, we'll use Abilify. Uh, stimulating antidepressant if there's depression. Um, and that's really the method we use here. We take your symptoms, combine it with your scan finding, and then we target treatment as opposed to what happens in most psychiatrists. You have these symptoms, so you have that diagnosis, take this treatment. Sometimes we'll see temporal lobe hypoperfusion. So one or both of the temporal lobes are low, and it can go with temporal lobe epilepsy, um, Something that's not quite as severe as that, temporal lobe dysrhythmia, so the rhythm's not quite right. We also see it in dyslexia, mood instability, irritability. We've seen it in virtually every case of intermittent explosive disorder. Um, and people who have illusions, um, such as they hear things that aren't there, but it's not voices talking to them. It's um, like they are the sound of bees buzzing. And so the treatment is we may use a ketogenic diet that decreases seizures. Nerve feedback and hyperbaric oxygen can help. We'll use anti-seizure medications like Lamictal or Neurontin or Trileptal. Um, sometimes, if it's not really mood instability, it's memory that's the problem. We'll use memory enhancing medications or supplements. The work we've done with SPECT, we publish this. If you get a scan, it changes what the doctor does eight times out of 10. It changes the diagnosis or treatment, or you see an unexpected injury, unexpected toxicity. There's a need for structural imaging, and 60% of the time it'll actually change the medication or supplements you would use with your patients. The big question about imaging is, does, do patients get better faster? Well, we have outcome studies, which we actually do on all of our patients. We have 7,000 outcomes. Uh, we published on the first 500 outcomes in 2013. On average, our patients are complicated. They have 4.2 diagnoses. They failed 3.3 providers and five medications. At the end of six months, 75% are better. And if we treat them here at Amon Clinics, 84% are better. The quality of life scores go up in 85% of our patients, the Cleveland Clinic um, reported the quality of life in their patients went up almost 50%. So we're very happy. SPECT improves outcomes for your patients. Just one quick case. Here is Professor Andy McGill. When he first came to see me, he wasn't healthy. His brain clearly wasn't healthy because he's overweight and drinking too much. The brain horrified him. He got very serious. Uh, 11 years later, he was much healthier, and his brain was healthier too. You are not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better.
I hope this was helpful for you.